is Erin Gruel, and welcome to our Freedom Forum Live. I've got three of the most amazing freedom writers sitting beside me, and for the next hour, we're going to be sharing stories about our new book, Dear Freedom Writer. And we're also using this wonderful opportunity to raise money for our student authors. We have 50 student authors from cities and states, countries and continents around the world. And we are desperately trying to get our family to join us for our official book launch that's happening on March 29th. So throughout this hour, if you are inspired, if you are moved to a most, if you have a tier or two, if you've got fingers that are working, go online, chat with us, ask us questions, and donate. Um, you may be the difference of a kid in another country who gets to be on their first plane, their first hotel, and meet these amazing authors. So we're so excited that you're joining us. I want to start our, our wonderful hour with some donors who just came in in the last couple of days. I want to give shout outs to everyone who donates live. So I want to do a shout out to some special folks. Any amount of money is going to be appreciated. So I want to start with Liz Herrera. Liz Herrera donated a dollar. And for me, that's gonna be the most exciting place for us to start. If you are home and you don't pick up that candy bar, if you are home and you don't go to Starbucks today and spend that $5, if you are home and you make a sandwich, rather than going to McDonald's, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, is gonna help us get some great kids here. So Liz, thank you for donating a dollar. Um, if you got a dollar to spare, send it to us. I also want to say thank you to Crystal Donald. Crystal Donald is not going to go to Starbucks for five days because she donated $25. So thank you, Crystal. Um, brew your coffee at home. Have some hot tea. We still want you to be caffeinated, but thank you for that $25. Uh, Jolene, my dear friend Jolene from Massachusetts, also donated $25. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of our family. Ooh. Uh, this is like a family at Starbucks for an entire week. Sheila, Sheila Greenland donated $102.08. I love when they're in these, um, these funky numbers. Sheila, thank you. $100 is going to help us get a wonderful kid from another continent to our shore. I love these next two donors. The family that donates together stays together. And so I love that a daughter and a father both donated. Uh, the daughter, Samantha Wayne, donated first $50, and I think that was the spark and the catalyst for her mother and father to donate as well. So for the Wayne family, we have $50 from a daughter, and we've got $102.08 from the parents. Um, the family that donates together stays together, which is where we're going to start now, because you're not seeing double. Don't adjust your screen. I know you might think that you're seeing double. But in our family, uh, these, these wonderful young women are identical twins. When they enter today, after 30 years, you, you think I'd figure it out? No, I have not. <laughs> I have not. So we're going to start on this side, our, our beautiful twin number one. Uh, this is Shanette. Say hello to everyone who is watching live. Hello, everyone. Yes, my name is Shanette, and I want to welcome you all to our live. I love that she's rocking her warrior sweatshirt. She is a freedom warrior at Waldorf University, where the freedom writers have been taking classes, finishing bachelor's degrees, getting masters, and she's got a straight A average. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to skip over Ty for a moment, and then we're going to do a little boomerang, and we're going to go to her twin. Which one was born first? Of course it had to be me. <laughs> and who would that me be? <laughs> this will be Shanita. Yay. Thank you guys for joining us, you guys. I, I love three minutes before we started, uh, Bossy younger sister said to Bossy older sister, Shanita, take off your sunglasses. And she said no. So I love that there's no real power play going on here. <laughs> but that was like one minute or two minutes or three minutes. How, how much older are you? 43 minutes. 43 minutes. Yes. That's a lot of time <laughs> yeah. with this one in the room. Still, still cooking. I still baking. I'm trying to get some space. Uh, those 43 minutes was the last space you ever had. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be real. So you're not seeing double. Um, the delight of my life. And I, I will tell you, in class, I could not tell them. 
it, it wasn't until so they got a little older and they would add different jewelry, maybe a, a tongue ring or two. <laughs> so I actually asked she needed a day to stick at her time. That's how I know. <laughs> she literally did. Literally, like five minutes ago. Um, not to be outdone with the twin sandwich. The two of us are kind of in this twin sandwich. Ty. Oh, how do you feel being between your your grumpy older mom and your sisters? I love it. It's family. It's family. It's family. Um, what I love about Ty is in the world of, of our Freedom Rider men, there's a word that I always hearken to, which is tender. Um, I am between two folks who have served and sacrificed, so I salute to you both. Um, and so when you think about folks who, in this time of trouble around the world, you know, our hearts are aching for our Ukrainian brothers and sisters and people who are fighting for freedom. But Ty and Shanette have, have heard that call of duty, and they both have served in the military and our, our armed forces. And I'm so proud every time I, I need to feel courage and honor and dignity and respect, I turn to them. So before we begin, could both of you say something in honor of those who believe in democracy and freedom on foreign soil who are displaced? We're almost up to 2.5 million Ukrainians, mostly women and children and the elderly. Uh, fleeing their countries. Is there something you'd like to say before we dive in to pay them the honor and the dignity they deserve? I'm trying to find the correct words because I can say a lot of other words, but remember the history because I think that's a message for everybody. Remember your history because it's going to keep repeating itself if we don't learn our history and actually see what's going on and change it. The change has to happen like yesterday, not tomorrow. But yesterday. Uh, that's why she's a straight A student. <laughs> uh, I used to always say, apparently she was paying attention, <laughs> that if we don't learn from our history, we, we are doomed to repeat it. And yeah. we are seeing that unfold on, on foreign soil. Uh, you have served and sacrificed. You are still a proud member of the military as well. So what would you like to say to our brethren on foreign soil? I'd say there's nothing glorious about war. I mean, it's times of extreme pain, displacement. Um, you know, we've got to do more than just thoughts and prayers. They're hurting, we see it, and we can't just do like the normal, typical, uh, I'll chat about it or, you know, my prayers are with you, and then you forget about it. People are dying every day. We need to do something. Mm. So at some point today, um, do what you do, whether you pray, light a candle, whether you, you send uh, goods and services, but do something. We are we are a team in our Freedom Rider family who are about action, who are about doing. And ironically, this, this term war, we can clearly see it with, we see javelins and stingers and tanks. These three folks survived what they like to call an undeclared war. Right here in the streets of Long Beach, you are joining us today in our Freedom Rider headquarters. And so even though it's a beautiful day here in Southern California, in their youth, they had to dodge bullets. In their youth, there was batter rams that broke into doors into their very homes, which we'll get into today. In their youth, they were afraid of, of anything outside of the confines of that safety. And when that safety is, is at risk, there's never safety. So room 203 for us was a very safe place. For those that we're gonna be talking about today is how could we take the safety of room 203 and create it virtually online for kids on other soil, for kids who have their, their own wars. And those wars not come, might not come from javelins and stingers and tanks, but there could be a war in their home. There could be a war in their head. There could be a war in their community. So we're going to pay, pay homage to our family who's living through that undeclared war. So these are these are scholars. These are soldiers. These are people. Oh, speaking of one of our warriors. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to get I'm going to get interrupted and a lot. And that's OK. So we're all going to pretend that we all have ADD or ADHD today because it's going to be very frenetic and frenetic for a reason because we're gonna keep getting donations from those of you that are watching. But there is a beautiful young woman we all met her at my mother's memorial service. Uh, she is blind. She is African-American. 
and she doesn't want to be invisible or silenced. Uh, her name is Jasmine Matthews. She's coming. She's coming for this book. She's coming for all of you because Jasmine just donated $25. Now, what makes this unbelievable is the last live we did. Jasmine gives me chills. I hope you can't see them on my leg. Um, Jasmine donated $100. So Jasmine is $125 in. She's coming to our party. She told her parents, you stay at home. I don't need you. You can drop me up. You can pick me up. Uh, we will take very good care of you. These are your big brothers, Jasmine. They're yes. going to love on you. We met your adorable dad. Um, so tell your dad, don't worry. We, we got you. Oh, uh, Maria Flores. Maria Flores, I believe, also donated the last time we did this. Wow, uh, $100. That's a lot of Starbucks. That's a lot of McDonald's. Gas prices, that's a lot of gas. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you for donating. So I was just bragging about uh, the undeclared war that the Freedomers wrote about in this book. Um, this is the cover of our 20th anniversary edition for those of you that are not familiar with this new cover. This new 20th anniversary edition came out right before the pandemic. And I know that the last two years are like the last two years. You know, we kind of went down a rabbit hole. But these amazing Freedom Riders have stories in the 20th anniversary edition specifically about the now. So they were poised. They were ready. They had picked up their pen. They picked up the keyboards. There was a moment. I'm not going to tell you what she wrote, but in this very room, that Jeanette had this guttural, visceral wail that pierced the silence and a moment of reprieve of, I don't know if I'm ready. I'm not, I'm not sure I want the story in this book. And she ran up the stairs and you could hear a pin drop. And then you could hear everybody's heart racing and our palms got a little clammy. And she faced a fear. She told her truth. She shared a story. And that story is in this book. So I, I want to salute you again, not just for fighting on foreign soil, but for fighting that fear. So how does that feel to know I, I did it? I, I, I did it then. And we're going to talk about you doing it again. It's, I'm proud of myself. I, I really am. Um, it was something that I suppressed for so long that I thought, well, if I keep suppressing it, people will keep believing me. But that wasn't healthy and it wasn't working anymore because I was battling an even bigger storm in my own head because I wasn't facing it. So to be able to purge that and, and get it out, actually it drained me. It, it, it drained me completely. Like for weeks I was literally immobilized. Like I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to do it anymore because I had gone so long with the act of the suppression that I didn't really know exactly what my life actually was because I was reliving the same story I was telling others and I believed it. So for me to believe it, I knew others believed it. So for me to actually face that and restart my life, I'm still restarting my life. So um, it's, every day is a learning experience and I'm happy because I'm learning something that is healthy and I'm out of the closet, I'm out of the darkness. And to be able to try to feel what joy is, I'm not there yet, but I'm happy. Mm -hmm. So it, I'm, I'm, I'm happy I've done it. I would do it again if I would know that this was what the other half looked like. So what a great launching pad because for the Freedom Riders, we have each other. Like we are the family we've made. We are the family we have chosen. We, we gather in this sacred space and we, we seal off the world for these young authors who have read this book who've watched the film, they may be alone. They may have a parent or a teacher and it might be them against the world. So the reason we are fighting and the reason we are fundraising, the reason this book has to get out in the world, this new book, is because we wanna bring those people who suppressed, who were immobilized, who might've felt catatonic, um, we wanna show them joy. There's so much joy. It's ironic that Jeanette said she didn't know how to feel joy because she's the most joyful person. When she walks in the room, we squeal, um, we hug, we dance. We might do some dancing today, <laughs> you know? But you, you, to me, they are the personification of joy. So I, I have a little surprise. Um, these Freedom Riders know me. I love shtick, I love tchotchkes, I love a good costume or two. 
I love magic. So I have a little trick up my sleeve. They don't even know this is live. I want to see their impressions. Um, in this very room once, we had a magician. And in this very room, we had a magician who literally pulled a rabbit out of a, out of a magic hat. And we squealed. And then there were doves. PETA, don't come after me. There are no pets in my hat, OK? PETA, do not come after me. No furry feather friends are in my hat. But I do have a hat. I do have a wand. And moments before we planned our live yesterday, something arrived at our doorstep. Nobody else has seen it, touched it, felt it. Hocus pocus. <laughs> I do have chills. You can oh see them on my legs. Oh my god! Look at this one. Look at this one. I want you to uh, zoom in to the cover of this very good book that came out of my magic hat. So I will put my magic hat on for a moment or two because I love. Oh my god! <laughs> It's real. Oh it, 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 it smells real. It is real. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's real. I'm, I'm going to take off my hat because it oh looks very good. Oh but, um, and I don't keep a secret. Oh. I literally am not Ooh. a good right. secret keeper. So they walked out and I told time, like, I have a secret. I, I, I kept a secret. You do have a secret. And like, I'm, not, I'm not known for that. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to be like Vanna White on, on uh, the Wheel of Fortune. Um, as I'm being Vanna, I'm shaking too. <laughs> um, this is an advanced copy. Like, we, we said, can you send us a copy for our live? It's not even in the bookstore yet. You could you can oh, order it, but it will literally not be in the world until March 29th. Um, so I'm shaking. I'm, I'm gonna pass it to you guys oh, <laughs> because so it's like a little baby. <laughs> this is. So if you are one of our writers and you were jealous, uh, we got it. Smell it. Smell it. Does it smell new? Yes. The font on it is amazing. I know. Everything about this. So we're a little distracted with my with yeah. my magic wand. Um, for those who are just joining us, I I, I need donations because I need all of these. I'm just gonna wave my magic wand the entire time. Right. I feel like I'm a conductor, but I am conducting. I am conducting the idea of getting the student writers who helped and contributed and wrote letters and these letters were like a message in a bottle and we are right across the, the way from the ocean so they landed on our shores it's crazy right it's, yes. it's distractingly crazy it's very distracting very, 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 <laughs> while, while we are being distracted uh, while they are touching and feeling oh my goodness Gail Gail was in this very beautiful, we pull small nighters, Gail. Gail, you're gonna go bonkers. Dare I say bad shit crazy. <laughs> Dare I say it's gonna be like an Oprah moment where you get a book and you get a book and you're here might just spontaneously burst into flames. <laughs> because Gail helped us do the editing. And there was nights that, that I literally, when we were like pulling all nighters, I, I fell asleep. There might've been a snort, there might've been some drool. <laughs> there was definitely some snoring. Um, Gail would poke me and Matt would pat, poke me and we'd wake up. Uh, Gail, you're going to go crazy. But Gail just donated. This is like a paycheck. A whole pay. $250. Gail is one of our amazing Freedom Rider teachers. Her fingerprints are all over this book. Yes. Take my wand <laughs> all over this book. Uh, Gail, you're going you're gonna to burst into tears. Uh, your hair is going to light on fire. It is magic. Yeah. Look at Ty's actually growing. Oh, yeah. Ty's actually growing. <laughs> I'm telling you. I I just want to read. Oh I'm my sorry. god. I'm, 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 I'm an anonymous person. An anonymous person literally also just gave us 100 bucks. But I want to take this tender moment with Ty because your life is about to change. Oh god, I'm certain I too. Oh my god. So just, I, I want to I cue this up in a moment. This photo, we fought like hell for this photo. Uh, this looks so joy, like like Chanette said it, about joy. You gotta dig deep sometimes um, to get the joy, to find the joy. And this photo 
of Shanita and Ty was in a room full of young middle school kids who had just lost their friend at school because of bullying. And these wonderful Freedom Myers parachuted in as if they were going to war to bring light and love. And what I love about this photo is you see that you see the love and the texture and the tenderness and the hugs. And we had to find all these kids in the middle of a pandemic. Kids might have moved, kids whose backs were to us, so we had to try to figure out who was whom and find these kids in the world to be able to have this photograph on the cover that really is an homage to our partnership to Landmark Middle School, to our connection to the Marina Valley School District that we love so much. So I want to I want to go to the tears. You can cry. Um, it's very sexy, ladies. When the when the, the, when the gentlemen cry, um, we, we want to encourage that in our boys and our men. Uh, when we when we got it last night, Matt was crying and he kept saying, "I'm not crying. You're crying. I'm not crying." He's like, "I need little wipers for my glasses." <laughs> So, so Matt already had a good boo-hoo cry. I want you to have a good boo-hoo cry. Hold it. Um, because, well, hold it so they can see it. <laughs> don't, don't be so, don't be selfish. Let them do a little bit of magic. I got a magic hat. On the cover of the book. <laughs> um, the tears are real. Yes. And the magic is real. And tell me, tell me what does it feel like to see a secret come to light. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I words can't even begin to describe what I'm feeling right now. My blood, sweat, and tears. Writing a book right there. This book is going to help change so many lives for so many students who are thinking they're alone in so many situations. And we're showing them you're not alone. And we're giving you the breadcrumbs so you can survive just like you did. Mm. Not even breadcrumbs. I think like a sandwich. <laughs> like a full. Not, we're not about crumbs. We're not about crumbs. <laughs> we're all the fixes. The fixes. We're all about like the the gourmet sandwich. These ladies don't like my gourmet sandwiches. <laughs> I like add all the fixes, and they're like, Miss G, come on. But this is a gourmet sandwich. Um, for you, you, your son is in the room. Yes. Um, he's acting as her de facto manager today, and he gave Mama the approval to keep the shades on. Okay, let's just be real. But you got a book in your hands. Your sweet son is in the room. Um, what is that like? You're you're smiling from ear to ear in this cover. Literally, 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 I am. I think I was able. To, <laughs> I don't think I can smile that big, but <laughs> the smile came natural because. I was able to see them go from pain to happiness. And you you can't see that in anybody all the time. You know, sometimes if somebody's going through something, you see them stuck in it, you know, and the next day they're still in the same stagnant place. But this day we were able to see that progression. So that actually see the children change. We know children are resilient. We know that, hands down. But to see them bounce back like this and have hope that took the cake for me. And it was like, this is why I live. This is what I'm here for. That gave me confirmation. And this smile is confirmation. Uh, I'd like to just point out the obvious, the nails. <laughs> just, just look at the nails for a moment. Don't get too close. Look, 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 I, my nails, go. I don't have any because I was like literally in the kitchen preparing for them to come. <laughs> Look at her nails. Because um, I almost feel like you could be a hand model and a book model at the same time. So, so for those of you that have your cameras right now, just do a little, little modeling of the the book. Do a little vogue. <laughs> um, I mean, this was not this was not safe. They did not know the book was here. So we have got it in our hand. Um, for those of you that are voracious readers, four hundred and seven pages of stories. 407. And a lot of kids like to go to the very end and be like, I'm going to tell you, this will be no. like a page turner. Yes. Yes. This will be something yeah. that you cannot put down. Yeah. You're going to need an entire box of Kleenex and more yeah. because it is so beautiful. So I want to go back to you. You did it with the Freedom Marsh Diary, um, both when you were in high school and on our 20th anniversary. Mm -hmm. You were ready. You were like, you were poised. You were ready. And then suddenly, there were letters that were arriving on our shore. And that, that message in a bottle, a cry for help, you heard the cry for help. And through Zoom 203, we created our own classroom, Zoom 203, you were able to work with these kids and say, I need more. 
Mm -hmm. They were doing the, vis the visceral will like you did. They were hiding in the corner like you did. And how did you take what you did and, and coach some inc incredible kids dealing with some of the most horrific things and allow them to realize through you as the respondent, it gets better. You know, I don't have I don't have a magic wand. I don't have pixie dust, but it gets better. I'll give you the wand. For me, it was reminding the kids one that they're kids, and with being a child, you are allowed growth. Even as an adult, we got to remind ourselves that we're still growing. But as a child, you're supposed to grow. And unfortunately for some of the situations that some of them were put in, they have to grow out of them. And in order to grow out of them, you have to feed yourself. You can't expect to move on and not replenish yourself because you're gonna die. You're literally, I'm mean, not physically, literally mentally you're gonna die. So to remind them that feeding yourself is okay, it feels selfish, it really does, but it's needed. In order to grow out of a situation, one, you have to first acknowledge the situation, yep. which I told them that was the hardest thing for me to do, was acknowledging it. Once I acknowledged it, I then had to vet the situation. What about the situation is actually mine? Mm -hmm. And if it's not mine, excuse my French, but take your shit. And that's exactly what I told the kids. Give it to the Her son is out of the room right yeah. now. Yeah. Yes. Not, not You're gonna get all the cussing out before Johnny comes back. <laughs> but you have to give it back. Whoever that baggage belongs to, give it back to them because you've been carrying their baggage thus far. And it's not for you to carry it. One, because you're a child. Two, because you're growing out of whatever situation they put you in. So Johnny's back. I was just about to say that. Well, you know, so <laughs> we're gonna just remember what I said. So when you give it back, give them all their stuff back and be honest about it. I'm okay with giving you your stuff because you have to work on that. Yes, I'm in this situation with you but it's not for me to do. I have my own stuff to do. And with that, then you can actually layer what is yours and what is not. And then how is it that we can change that? What about the situation can you change now? And what about the situation has already changed that you never acknowledged? So that's another thing too. When you don't realize that you've already outgrown the situation, but because you know of it, you're still stuck in it, that's a difference. So if you've already outgrown it, then leave it <laughs> and move on. So helping the kids realize that their situation was doable and not this big gigantic boulder that was actually sitting over them that they were hoping didn't fall. It was a it was a moment, a pivotal moment, where they were actually able to say, okay, I can continue, right? Okay, I can tell a little bit more about this. Okay, I can now expound on exactly what happened. I know I gave one sentence, but now I can tell the whole story. And then I can tell you what happened afterwards. And that's what we were missing. So to get them to actually feel comfortable to actually say their piece gave them peace. Mm. Uh, check out the nails. <laughs> I have an itch on my back. I I know why you're a straight student because you're just you know I, I watch news all the time and there's teleprompters and there's notes and there's gamblers. I am not a ham little Johnny eight years old. He's, he's our handler, uh, but I didn't even know Johnny could come up with stuff like that. Um, I, 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 I'm saying this to you, and I know you're going to cringe, and you're going to look away, and you're going you're gonna to minimize. Do not minimize. Okay. There are 50 responses from Freedom Writers that all were able to give these letters and respond. And in, in that response team are also amazing Freedom Writer teachers. They're anonymous. But... A singular story stands out to me that is so exquisite. For someone who never thought, I'm not a writer, I'm not an English major, I had to keep telling you this letter is exquisite. And I've taught English to middle school, high school, and college students and beyond. Trust me, it's that good. So when, when, I, when I say that to you over and over again about something that, that you wrote, that you wrote, how does it, can you receive that? And not to flat. Can you receive that and say, damn, I'm good? Or Johnny's like, damn, I'm good. <laughs> Darn it, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good. I, I can take that. <clears throat> take it. Take it. I can, I can take it. 
I just have to believe it. I can, I can take it. Um, come here, little cutie pie. I, I was getting some cues from the side. Say, say hi to everybody. Just say hi. <laughs> I, I, I want to, this is our manager. <laughs> I was getting signals. Thank God. I just want you to know when I say we've got a manager in the house, it's real. Uh, your mother's on the cover of, this is your auntie. Go see your mom for a second. Go sit for a second as a manager. Sit in her lap for a second. You're alive and people all over the world can see you right now. Um, I know I know you were a few words, but you are a manager. Um, look at that book, and your mom is on the cover, and that means when you go to elementary school, I know you're eight going on about 18, um, you could tell your teacher, my mom's on the cover of a book. What does that feel like? We could put it into a K-pop song. Yeah. I know you're good at K-pop. Uh, I don't think I'm good. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday. Saturday. But I'm not kind of good at it. Okay. So okay. Go. What's it feel like though? You're holding a book on your mom's lap, live for the world. Literally. They always say, "Don't go live with children or babies." Or animals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like you get to go to your you get to go to school someday and like in a library, you'll be like, my mom is on that book. Feel does it feel good? <laughs> yeah, that's your answer. Yeah. Okay, we'll take it. We'll take it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um He's done. He's done with us. Oh, we got a hug. We got a hug, and we're not as fun as TikTok, so we're, he's going to leave the premises. Um, but for you, hey, mom, and your son's in the room, and uh, when the camera's not rolling, he's very bossy. Um, really? How does it feel to know that you you are a mother, you are a wife, and you, you get to go home to all your aunties and mother and everybody and say, like, this is kind of real. And then wherever you go, you can just pretend it's you. <laughs> you just get whatever room you're in, yeah. you just own it. So for the both of you, what is that? Like I got, I got the tears and the tie, and the tenderness. I, I want to hear from you. You just had, you had your boy. You had your boy who was at a loss for words. Learning at a loss. It's it's crazy because I kind of feel like somebody needs to pinch me. Pinch her. <laughs> <laughs> Her, her husband's in the that was not a flirtation. <laughs> her husband's in the next room. <laughs> but because it's like, was I there? Did I do this again? We did this. Uh, we did yeah. this again. Okay. <laughs> you know, so it's it's really mind blowing. I mean, I keep looking at it. I'm like, it's smooth. Is this? I'm like, I was a part of this. Like, do I still deserve this? I wasn't sure the first time. And then I got a little sugar second time. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> it's it's really mind blowing. But I think as a mom, a wife, and everything else, I'm I'm loving that because I think I was able to give all aspects to a mom, a wife, a scholar. You, you both are wearing your, your sweatshirts. You are yes. part of this Freedom Warriors, you know, cohort. Yes. Also straight A's. Um, so we're going to go back to our students, and what I'm going to ask of you is there are students, again, like we, we are lifelong learners in the free yeah. world. We never stop learning, and what we want to do is we want to go back to those that are just joining us live. We have a, a stack of cards, and these cards have names, and these students have um, dreams and aspirations. Some of them don't have the network or the wherewithal to come to California. Some don't have... The ability to ask, asking is hard, asking is scary. And they want to meet their brethren. They want to hold this book two days before it comes out. They want to make uh, magic when they return home. And so we're asking those of you that are inspired. Liz Herrera gave us a dollar and I, I did the dance. Well, I didn't really dance, I just kind of squirmed. But I was I will squirm yet again. Um, some of you gave 25, if you give $5, we will read your name out no amount is too small and we will celebrate so we're going to ask all of you please yes please and thank you to help us get these kids here um, the kids that we are speaking about 
the kids that we are asking to come. So I want to start with you about these kids. Um, we, right, right behind the camera is a list of our yeses, maybes, and nos. The nos that can't come crush us. And the reason they can't come is a country might have shut down because of COVID restrictions. So Casey in New Zealand, we, we want her here. She wants to be here. Her country won't let her leave. Sweet Niaz is uh, from Kurdistan. ISIS blew up his family home. He made his way to Germany as an asylum seeker and he can't come. But we're gonna represent for Casey, we're gonna represent for Niaz and those fabulous folks on other shores. But you, without saying the name, there's a story that you responded to and you saw on the yes list that that student is coming. And it makes me wanna cry. A couple moments before we went live, he said, yes. So how does it make you feel that we were able to help raise awareness for your letter that you responded to? They're coming. Tears again. Oh God. <laughs> um, go there. Take us all there. Take us there about your 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 brethren, someone that you poured your heart and soul up, and and they did. And it was terrifying. It's still terrifying. Um, but you worked hand in glove. Yeah, it was kissing it. It was magic. Like she had the strength and courage to speak on a subject that I couldn't even speak about until my thirties. To see her make her way through that and show her that yeah, I went through it too, and there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And to put that on paper so other students can see that they're not alone, it means so much. And we're basically passing a torch. You know, we start off as authors, the students, and now we're doing the same thing for them. Like you know, we're on the cover of the book. We're co-authors, but they, they really wrote the book. It's, it's really for them. We're passing it forward, paying it forward, and this is their time to shine. I'm so happy. I think what's really amazing to you about the era that I was raised, I'm, I'm a lot older than them, the, the era that they were raised is, you know, we didn't, we didn't have the opportunity on a screen to choose a pronoun. We didn't, we never had courageous conversations about sexual identity. And what I love about this young author is we met this young author, embraced her into our family as a she, and because of the love and the warmth of this community has made the bold confirmation that they are transitioning and from a she to a they. And so we're still trying to adapt our pronouns and, and, and honor the authenticity that they want to live their life in. But I love that we're able to, to write about that in this book. There's Floridians who pass laws and will probably allow our book in a classroom. And you know what, let them because they can burn it, they can ban it, they can censor it, but this book is out there for anyone who's transitioning, for anybody who needs to have their authentic voice. So I say, bring it on Governor DeSantis, bring it on Governor <laughs> Abbott, bring it on anybody who doesn't want the truth in your state and your community. Yes, I just said their names um, because I think you're gonna have a problem, but there are teachers who are gonna find this book. There are kids who are gonna find this book and there are kids who are gonna to choose to live how they wanna live. So how does that make you feel that when when you meet this young person in that transitional process, that's okay, that we might stumble and we might not always have the right pronoun, but it's okay that we're gonna love on our fabulous family member. That was good. Like like you're saying, we're, we're all one big family and it's gonna be good to actually see everybody again. I'm so happy for her. I'm so proud of the steps she's taken, and she gave me the strength to actually write about it. Like, that was hard. That was very, Lots very, tears. yes. I literally drove home crying after going over the story and to hear the strength that she had. I'm, I'm proud of her. Look, look, look at she. She's just like, <laughs> she's frozen. She's frozen with the book. Look at her. <laughs> We can actually move. She's not moving. She's holding the book and she's not moving in the break. So I, I love it. You don't even like you don't want to move like it's a baby. It is a baby. It is a baby. It is a baby. Um so for those of you at home, I, I want I want some donations. Send them to me. Send me some donations because the donations are gonna help these kids. Uh these kids don't have the economic wherewithal to to buy the finest of clothes sometimes. Uh 
you know, for a lot of uh, freedom riders, they're wearing hand-me-downs. So they're, they're coming to a new show or they're coming to a party and we don't care what they wear. We want them to celebrate who they are. We just want to get them here. So if you could help us do that, that would be amazing. Shanita, as you hold your baby, and uh, I, I, I want to paint a picture for our, our, our watchers, and I want you to speak on your your letter and, and the response you created, because that young writer is not on the yes, it's on the maybe list. We, we got we to gotta raise money to get your student uh, letter recipient here. This beautiful young woman in Kentucky was out on the streets um, saying a name teaching all of us how to say a name, Brianna Taylor. And the story was about not forgetting and, and, and using a voice to stand up, speak up, and speak out. Justice has still not been served for Brianna Taylor, as we know, but she wrote about it, this young girl, and she sent this letter to us. And the twins sat down to respond together, but you kind of have become the spokesperson for something that happened in your home when you were children to harkening back to racial reckonings here in, in Los Angeles when you were a child and all these years later for other children. Like, why haven't we as a society learned? So talk about that story, the importance of saying a name and why we got to get that young woman here all the way from Kentucky. She's got to be here. She's got to be here to hold that book and to take a picture of a selfie with yeah. holding that one. <laughs> Talk, talk about that, Sophie. We gotta say her name. <laughs> 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 Which is why she needed to be here. So, because the reason why it's important for her to come because what happens to me shouldn't still be happening. The fact that police officers can just bust in and barge in wherever, whoever home it is, and do as they please, and think it's okay, and just walk out like. Oh, wrong, wrong address. Oh, it was across the street. Oh, my bad. <laughs> and they keep going. And your life is at a complete disarray. And no one looks back. No one asks if you're okay. No one asks anything. Do you need a sip of water? Do you need a time to think? None of it. People lose their lives because of this. And you want us to be mute about it? How dare you? We can't be mute. We'll never be mute. If we're mute, we'd be doing the same thing, repeating history which is what, how we got into the situation now. Breonna Taylor should be living right now if we were not repeating history. Doing the same, we've been living by the definition of insanity. We're doing the same thing over, expecting a different outcome. That's not gonna change. If we're not changing it from the jump, it's not gonna change in the end. So bringing her here and saying her name and keeping it in the forefront makes a difference and it changes for the next generation to come. This is why this is important to get out there and have people have an opportunity to put their pencil to the paper and have a voice that way if they can't verbally say it. I don't care if you say her name a hundred times as if it was standards. Those words still matter because when you finish writing that name, somebody's going to see it, which means somebody has to say it, which means somebody has to change history so that when we don't have somebody barging in at somebody's home doing it whatever they please and then walk out because it doesn't bother them because they're not affected by it directly or indirectly because they don't know that person, so they don't care. You need to care, even if you don't know the person because that's how the life cycle goes. It continues to go because you need to just show the next person how you should be treated. You don't want somebody to treat your children in that way, so why are you doing it? Because the ones that's come behind you is gonna follow your same footsteps and think it's okay. And then if it comes into actually your circle, then you're gonna want somebody to do something about it, but you chose to do nothing when it was your turn. Mm -hmm. So while it's your turn, do something about it and change it and say that name. So words come to mind when I think about this book and I think about these authors and the authors we're trying to get here is author and activist, uh, ally and advocate. So we've got some advocates and allies out there. Uh, Mr. Falk. Just donated $25. It is a Starbucks free week. And we thank you, Mr. Fulk. Uh, Matt and Allie are newlyweds. Maybe they're gonna have to return. Maybe they got some duplicates. Maybe they got like two blenders or two toasters. Maybe they'll take one of those toasters back because they just donated to the cause $25. Our newlyweds. Oh, Rick, Rick just donated 50 smackers. That's like two weeks. 
of oh, uh, McDonald's, yeah, mm -hmm. in and out, yeah. <laughs> Starbucks, and everything combined. Oh, Nacha just donated fifty dollars. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Nacha. We appreciate that. Oh, read that one. Read that one. Anonymous, three hundred dollars. Wow. Okay, just do this yeah. and make it rain. <laughs> Um, forever. I want you guys to see right. This is money. This is money. Hey, 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 hey. If your name is in that set, we just made it ring. I'm not going to let this one ring. This was a big one. This is a big one. Are you guys ready? Do we get it? We're picking up the ring. 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 We're going to make it ring. If you want to make it ring, you can work. We're going to make it ring again. This one's, this was a big one. I kind of need, I need a magic hat, I need a wand, I need a book, I need to be very, you, I know, you put, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it out of said hat. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, okay, um, this is not to intimidate anybody who gave a dollar, because we want those dollars. This is not to uh, intimidate anybody who is not going to go to Starbucks, but this, this is a moonshot moment. Uh, Chase Bank, their director of DEI. Jonathan Morales, we had a little chit chat with him yesterday, and I was talking about our maybes. I was talking about who needed to come. An hour, my, my beautiful colleague Shelby and I um, were pulling out all the stops, and it was a, a Jerry Maguire moment. I think we had him at hello. We didn't know we had him at hello, but at the very end of our song and dance, he says, You had me at hello. I'm in for five thousand dollars. So Jonathan Morales. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my second second secret that I kept it for oh, like a whole day and 46 minutes. <laughs> a whole day and 46 minutes. A whole day. I had two secrets. I think she's scared of getting used to this. Right. I can not get used to this. So if you were one of our little authors at home and you were struggling with <laughs> your GoFundMe, not worth every single penny. From Chase and John Morales and the team of Chase is going to go to the GoFundMe's that have been created. If you are still struggling to come, uh, Shelby has worked her magic. We're, we're going to go on to your GoFundMe page. We're going to be Santa. We're going to be yes. Santa and we're going to start giving each and every one of those kids. If you are Jay Brown, Jay, you're going to get a little piece of Chase. If you are Arlie's or Hannah, you're going to get a little piece of this. Yaman, all the way in Akko, Israel. Yaman, Yaman, we want you here. Yaman, we want, oh God, God, we want you here. <laughs> Be careful what we ask for, but we want you here, Yaman. Um, Brianne, who is fighting for indigenous women and the Cree Nation in Alberta, Canada, you're coming. So for these kids, you, you guys have traveled, you guys have been places with us. Um, talk about what that means. Uh, Jade is in Louisiana. Arlie's is in Texas, um, Hannah is in Ohio, Yaman is in Israel, Becky is in Canada. This is getting some kids here. How does that feel? Like you guys have been on Zooms with them, you guys have been talking to them. We're taking some maybes and we're moving them over to yes. What does that feel yes. like? This is wow. awesome. Yes. That's yes. Awesome. This is a is it a word after awesome? <laughs> everyone is a song. I think, there's a, I think there's a Lego song that everyone is a song. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> so it is not too late. You can donate a dollar because when they get here, um, they're going to want to take a photograph. When they get here, yeah. they are going to probably want to buy a book. So I want to tell you about Kyan. They they call it Kyan is our ginger step. Kyan was about seven when we met him. His father is a proud Freedom Rider teacher. Kyan has two of the most exquisite fathers. We love Kyan. We love his two dads. And he wrote a story about being in elementary school and wanting to fight. Literally, he was out there fighting for Black Lives Matter. He was out there fighting for a good fight. And he said to his parents, I want to go to a pride parade. And they were scared. They're like, we live in a very conservative community. We're not gonna, we're not gonna wave a flag. We're, we're not gonna go to a pride parade. And he, at the tender age of nine, he's now 11, was like, we're going. And they did. And he wrote about it. Little Kyan created a GoFundMe page the other day. I, I kid you not, Little Kyan, he's a ginger snappy, bright red hair. His goal was to get $1,000. They uploaded the GoFundMe at 7 a.m. in the morning. By 11.52, he had $1,000. He reached his goal. 
he kept going. He kept going. So little Kyle, now that he's 11 years old, still in elementary school, started taking the money from his GoFundMe and donating money to Jaden, Louisiana, mm -hmm. to him in Ohio, wow. to all of his brothers and sisters he's never met other than a screen. $10 here, $20 there. Mm -hmm. So I am telling you, in honor of our, our little clients, that whatever comes our way, Oh my God, more's coming up. Oh, and little Colleen's dad, Manuel, just donated. I hope this is from your secret stash. $20. Colleen's daddy, I hope Colleen is sitting right beside you. Uh, sweet Sue Ellen Sue. Woo! Sue just donated $10. We're not going to let her go to Starbucks. <laughs> oh, Lori Orr just donated $100. Um, this is going to make me sob. $25. This is from Tara, Texas teacher. There, yes, yes, I called yes. out your governor's yes. name. I called out your governor's name for a reason, Tara, because you were the Texas teacher of the year. Tara was on yes. the the fabulous show Queer Eye. Queer Eye. Mm -hmm. Created a prom for her kids in the middle of the pandemic, and one of those beautiful kids is coming. It's coming. And we need these kids to come because they have their stories. Some of our, some of these kids who are coming. Um, look at their teachers as superheroes, and, and Tara's just that superhero. So we're going to get this little girl the opportunity to get on a plane and come to Long Beach. So why are you donating? This money needs to go to your girl. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take your $20 and we're going to get right back to you. So if you're at home and you're inspired and you got a kid that wants to come, donate a buck, two, five. If you're another big company like Chase... We will never turn out the $5,000, are you kidding me? No. Um, but every dollar counts. And for those of us that didn't have those dollars at home, I know we just kind of made it rain. A dollar when you're when you're walking around and you're hungry mm -hmm. and there's nothing in a, you know, a fridge other than a bar of butter or it's noodles or talk about what these dollars mean to a kid. You know, what, is, what is this money that is coming for them and going right back out for them? What does that mean? Because you guys were those kids at one point. You know, $25 donation, if you were, what that mean? Now it's going to mean that they can experience something different for them to be able to show someone else. So the pay it forward is now here. It's in position. They're ready to launch, and we're their launching pad because people did it for us, and it got us here. So now we're doing it and paying it forward for others, and they'll be able to keep the cycle going. So this is a, a hell of a lot. Every generation of free lives begins. Yes, it does. Yeah. I mean, every dollar is like, it gives them confirmation. Yeah. You know, the, all their hard work that them, you know, having that, that crying moment or shouting or even a laugh, it pays off, you know. And it can make a difference. Even though some people will look at children as like they're to be seen and not heard or they don't mean anything. You never went through anything. You're only a child. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't pay anything. And that's not actually true. So for them, they could say, no, I do matter. I do have a voice and I do go through things. And this is proof. My words is going to change something. And it made that dollar change. Uh, can I just say the obvious yet again? She's still holding on to the. This is, this is like a dog. We have dogs in the office. I know the dog is bonus. I, I got growled up the other day when I tried to take the bone. Watch, because she growled me. She growled me. She growled me. She growled me. She got rid of the bone without growling, but I got a little. I got a little. I saw a little too. Um, this just in. Oh, Brendan. Brendan has uh, been able to take our story far and wide to all the classrooms who, during the midst of the pandemic, wanted to meet these fabulous books. So, Brendan, a college student, just donated twenty five dollars, and that's a lot for a college student. So, Brendan, thank you for donating. Uh, no Starbucks. I know, there's, I know there's a Starbucks actually on the Chapman campus, so just bypass it for a week. Uh, we got another, got another dog with a bone. <laughs> You're, you're holding this one. I think you would like. He might have his own I said he was tender. He's got the tears. Right. Um, I told you the <laughs> So if, if this hour is in the indication, when, when Freedom Riders get together, we we laugh hysterically and we cry hysterically. And, 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 and it may be in the same span of five minutes. It might be in an hour. 
So these kids are coming to Long Beach for four days for healing, to be whole. And we're trying to get them here. So what does that mean for you guys to laugh hysterically and cry hysterically in a span of the five minutes to then pay it forward to these other kids? I'll start with you. Oh, what's that feel like? Good Lord. Um, it's a roller coaster of emotions and we're paying it forward. Like we started off stepping out of the darkness and realizing that we weren't alone. We had to put it on paper and now these kids get to do the same thing and they get to see it, you know, immortalized. It is forever and it's going to change lives. I am so proud of the movement <laughs> and the new generation of the kids that are coming after us. Yeah. Love it. Movement and mission. How about, yes. how about you? Do you? I think she might need to hold the book to talk. It's like the con, if you've read The Lord of the Flight, this is her conch. Yes. <laughs> Bring my baby back. Bring my Give baby her baby back. her conch back. <laughs> so how do you feel about this This laughing, crying, healing, and being whole? <laughs> I think it's a, a good bipolar movement. <laughs> Like that's what you want. To, like everybody would want to be bipolar. Like, yes, I want to. I want to feel that. Like, okay, you know, we'll be a therapist. And, yes. yes. It's like literally that. And it's like that's literally what you want. It's, like, it's okay to cry and laugh in the same moment because without the crying, where is the laughter? What are you celebrating if you didn't go through something? If you didn't feel something? You know, some people are like, I didn't go through anything. I don't know what. I'm... No, but you were there. You still felt it, so you still have the opportunity to cry and laugh. You can do both. <laughs> oh, stay the honest, yet again, breaking news. <laughs> it's like it's now like a block. Give me both. I'm gonna pass it down. You go. Oh, we got bear survival. We are. Clearly, there is no script. Um, back to you. Back to you, my 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 writer extraordinaire. A lot of you got stories that were perfect for you, and then that perfection it, it was this kind of call to action that we are all kind of perfectly imperfect. And so when you sat down yet again with those nails <laughs> on a keyboard, you were responding to the better version of yourself, taking the writer of the letter by the hand and and walking them over a bridge walking them over a mountain. So what was that like when you were once again trying to portray not not the wounded Shanette, but the wounded healer? The wounded healer. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think I kind of felt like you. Do you want to teach another? Yes. I, yes. yes. Like I became the teacher. I went from the student, which I feel like I'm always going mm -hmm. around you, but I became the teacher. And Honestly, I feel like probably how you felt when our first book came out, like a proud parent, like, <laughs> this is my kids, this is my kids. And I, I feel like this is exactly, I mean, they're not my kids, but <laughs> they're my siblings. But um, like these writers, they're my kids. Yeah. So, and it, it doesn't even matter if I wrote on one or 12 or they're all my kids. Yeah. So I, I genuinely feel like you and it, it's come Circle. Full circle. So, thank you. So, I, I think I listened. <laughs> I, I think for for all of these kids, they they get to go home, and you know they have the, the communal spirit here, but they're going home and they will have an educator, and and a, and a network, and they get to teach others. So, I want you to think of either the person you responded to or, or someone you connected with in our zooms, and tell them what they have to look forward to going. Forward. They're now they're authors, they're activists. So I'd like to end with a, a comment from each of you about this second wave, this next generation of storytellers. We'll start with you, give a book. It's so soft. I know it. It's so soft. I love it. Cradle. <laughs> to the next generation, you to the next wave, you get to choose. It's not what everybody else wants. You get to choose this. That's not okay. Hey, keep, keep talking. Yes. Keep, well, keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> we have a total on here. I'm not going to read the total because we're not done. 
they can still keep adding to this. You got three minutes to give, so I'm not reading a total because I don't want this to be the total. It's a really good total, though. Give it back. Give it back. Give it back. To the new authors, you are basically walking in the light now. We are walking out of the shadows of the darkness. The pain of your past is lighting the torch for those that are going to come after you. They're going to look to you. You're going to show them, just like Ms. G showed us, the way out of darkness. You're not alone. You're strong. You matter. You're loved. And this is going to show you how to feel that way about yourself. Drop, drop, drop the magic wand. <laughs> Mike, right. Robin, that would like right. the, the wand is a little bit more malleable. Church or girl? Um, I would say remember grace because you'll have just enough for that day. And tomorrow is a whole new day. Everything you're going through, tomorrow you'll be better. You'll be one more step ahead of where you were yesterday. So remind yourself to have peace and grace within yourself, and you'll go far. Oh my gosh. So I wanna, I wanna give you a little image in closing. Uh, this book is gonna hit the shelves on March 29th. We, we got an advanced copy for today, so as you can see, we're, 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 we're really excited. <laughs> I, 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 I gotta give it to her. But I, I want you to think of an image. Jasmine was one of our first donors today, and Jasmine is one of the authors. And we have created this scene on Tuesday, March 29th. You're all invited. If you are local or from far away, we're going to line up a huge row of student authors. And Jasmine is going to be first in line. And Jasmine is going to be first in line because she's blind. And she doesn't want to sign over any other signature. Let Jasmine sign your book. Let Jasmine pass it to little Robert Jr. or to Jeremiah or an affair, these kids, many of whom don't even know cursive because they stopped teaching it apparently in elementary school. So some of these kids are gonna to have to handwrite their name, but they're gonna put it in your book, or she ain't just book. <laughs> <laughs> so we are asking you, this doesn't have to end now. Um, I didn't wanna read a total because I want this to live. I want every kid, I want every kid to come. I want every teacher to help them come. I want every parent to send them on their way, knowing that life's gonna be better because they have this family. And so take this live stream and send it to somebody. When you're, when you're in a drive-through, maybe just don't get that extra thing of fries and say, you know what? I don't need those fries because the kid needs more. Um, it's hard to ask, so I'm asking for the kids. Let them come to Long Beach. Let them be activists and authors and allies for you. Because we have to have courageous conversations in our classrooms and in our homes, in our communities, and in our world. The world is still upside down. And so these fine folks are superheroes. These fine folks wanna make magic. So help us with a top half or two. <laughs> make a little magic. <laughs> help, help us make a ring. Um, buy a book and, and pay it forward. Pay that book forward to a principal who needs it, a politician who needs it, a parent that needs it, and have a courageous conversation with yourself. The best part of them is they pay it forward. So we're going to ask the same of you. Pay it forward because it's the right thing to do. So in honor of our namesake, John Lewis, an original freedom writer, R-I-D-E-R, -E whom we met, may you stand up, speak up, speak out, and pay it forward. Thank you.